are remarkably out of conformity with anything we can recognize as cosmic or global reality. Okay? That's why the religion really began to decline when it was revealed that um, the sun does not go around the earth and by analogy and in general that we are not the center or the object of things. The Big Bang did not occur so we could be here. The process of evolution did not occur so that I could be sitting here now. We get over that idea, these crazy self-centered ideas masquerading as, as humility and modesty, we'd be intellectually and morally much better off right away. The word or uh, the concept of solipsism comes up a lot in your writing. What does it mean and why do you use it? It means, it means the, the belief that no one is important to you. So I have to use it a lot because it's a very <laughs> commonly encountered belief. And very often, of course, the people who have it don't realize they've got it. So it's your agreeable job to point it out to them. That's what they're suffering from. Next call for Christopher Hitchens, who was born in Portsmouth, England in 1949, Buffalo, New York. Yes, I have two statements. And I think the reason you have trouble with your belief system, Christopher, is because you didn't get a chance to form one when you were young. You got sent to a boarding school, apparently, and so you didn't really have a belief system. I remember being eight, and I wondered why a lady, how a lady could have a baby, it was a movie, and without a doctor, and I thought the people in the movie were lying to me because it couldn't happen. There was no doctor there. I had no understanding of it, so therefore, it seemed a lie. But I tell you, faith comes from experience. The people are not reading things and believing it. It comes from experience. If you I, I saw my mother pray, so that's why I learned it from. I saw her pray every night, kneeling, until she got too old to get up. Then she would kneel in bed. Then I had to try it for myself because I got so sick and I couldn't get well. And I finally did get well. It was a mental thing, and I finally recovered. And it took some months to do it, or a lot of long weeks, but I just woke up one day and I was well. But my real shown up belief in God came when I had an instantaneous healing. I was at home alone, sick again, and I just prayed and asked God to come sit beside me and help me, and it was to Jesus. And I felt the heat like they always explained it was, come over me. And I mean, it was momentarily. I was sick one minute and well the next, and I just got up and went to sleep, and the next day I went to work. I was totally instantaneously healed. Black people have to believe in God or else we'd still be in slavery. There is a God. You just don't know. And if you want to know if it's true, put it to the test. Try it. Pray some time and see if anything happens. It's happened enough for me that I can't have a doubt. And the same is with psychic phenomena. If something has happened to you, a thing happens, and then it comes to pass. You dream a thing, and it comes to pass more than once. It has to be a fact. It can't be a lie. Thank, Thank you, you, Carla. No response? No, I take it as a comment. Have you ever prayed? No. Uh, what do you say to... No, that, well, no, that's... I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. I mean, one was forced to pray um, several times a day. But some of the things you had to say aloud, um, the Nicene Creed, for example, or sometimes um, the Apostles' Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, and so forth. So, yeah, I've, in, I've intoned that, yes. And then, then I discovered that um, they can make you come to church, they, but they can't actually make you pray. You don't have to do that. And I stopped. Uh, I stopped singing the hymns, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't kneel or bend forward when it was prayer time. They, and there was nothing they could do about that, because the law only says you have to go. It doesn't say you've got to believe. Um, in the New Yorker profile. But I would feel ashamed of myself if I did pray because that is uh, what solipsism, I'm afraid that's what the lady was suffering from there too, for all her obvious sweet and genuine character. She thinks the world is all about her, and that Jesus is listening in case she has anything to say. It's all, it sounds so modest, doesn't it, so humble. It's an incredibly arrogant claim, as well as an absolutely ludicrous one. If people got well by praying, ma'am, I suppose I have to say this to you, we wouldn't be in the case that we are, with so many people desperately sick. Why do you think? Beyond the reach even of the skilled medicine, which is the only hope of a, of a cure. It is, it is not that. That is not how people get better. It's, um, Why do you think then that over a billion people on this earth think there's some kind of a higher power? I don't know that they do. But I think that the reason would be, let's, let's grant that, that, that they really do believe this and uh, give them credit for, for sincerity in the belief. 
my analysis in my book is this. We're, we are pattern-seeking animals. It's a good thing about us that we, we look for patterns, we look for um, recurrences and consistencies and so forth. And it's a, it's a weakness as well as a strength because we, for example, we prefer a conspiracy theory to no theory at all. But we do look for patterns and it's quite difficult for us to imagine that we don't know the cause of things or the first cause. We, we'd like to think we could find that out. Um, and we also have, a, it's very dissuade us that things are all about us and that we're the object of all this. So if people say, well, um, look, you know, these, the stars move in a predictable way, um, the seasons move in a predictable way, there must be some system here. Must, it must mean something. Um, it must have been started by someone. Now, as you know, all of these are completely unwarrantable assumptions, but they, the counterintuitive is, is the problem with the truth of it. Um, and not only that, you know, but I might be the winner in this in this, in this destiny, and it might be all about me, and my God might turn out even to be the strongest one. Have you ever written about what your mother's suicide? I've written about it, no, no. You talked about it last year in the New Yorker profile. Yeah, if people ask me, I'll, I'll, I'll I don't go all, um, What happened to I don't, I don't clam up if I'm, if I'm not to be asked, but I don't feel, would catch what I'm quite happy to satisfy their curiosity. What happened to her? She, uh, very sad to say, um, in a moment of extreme unhappiness uh, with a man who she had thought would be a better man than he was, um, in despair, really, at the end of a love affair, um, with him, uh, uh, about one of the suicide back. So I think she felt that she wouldn't, that this had been a failure, and she wasn't going to get another chance to be happy. And I think she was in, in many other ways at that time quite overwrought. Um, and she went back to the place where she'd been happiest with him. And they, they, I think he, I have a feeling, I can't prove it, but I have a feeling he slightly talked her into it. It wouldn't have been in her nature to take her own life. But I think she was very suggestible at that point, point as well. So uh, that was when I was, um, what well, was 1973? I was 24. Is your father still alive? No. His, my father died in 1988. He outlived her by some time, though he was a good deal older than her. He, he, she made it to be about 51, 2, and he was 79 when he died. Las Vegas, you're on the air with Christopher Hitchens. Uh, hi, Peter, and hi, Christopher. Hi. <clears throat> Christopher, uh, I've been an admirer of yours for more than 20 years. I particularly admire your vocabulary and the forceful and witty ways you express your opinion. Too kind. I have a couple of questions about our military today. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments on the model of the all-volunteer army supported by independent contractors who are doing the work that used to be done by soldiers. And also, I'd like your remarks on the performance of our uh, military in Iraq. It seems to me that there have been a number of shortcomings, uh, not the least of which is uh, it seems to me the high rate of atrocities per capita uh, as compared with previous wars. So. Thanks again. I look forward to your comments. Bye-bye. Well, on the um, all-volunteer army, I'm a supporter of that on, on principle. I, I agree with the finding, oddly enough, of Nixon's uh, commission on the draft, uh, that it should be abolished as, a, as a constituting involuntary servitude, which, which cannot be imposed upon any American. I, I, I'm quite certain that I agree with that. 